I'm going to record. Um, yes, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Um, Prosper, thank you so much for joining us as well. Yeah, so as you're just jumping on, guys, introduce yourselves in the chat. Please introduce yourselves in the chat. Prosper will be doing an audit towards the end of the call. Could you please, um, yeah, could we, could we, could we uh, please ensure that if you want your website audited, that is, you put it in the chat. Now, welcome so much, Prosper. Nice to have you. I'm so excited to have you. Um, me and Prosper come um, not very long ago, not as much as Josie. Uh, and we're going to probably, um, uh, if we can, let's keep it. Let's keep it English only because there are some people who are not from uh, Zimbabwe or from Africa. So let's try and keep it English only. Uh, but we don't come from that far, maybe five or six years ago that I met Prosper and he's become a very important piece of asset in my business. I just said to him the other day, Prosper, you are, um, you are my mirror. <laughs> As in that, when, when I'm having business issues or when I've got marketing issues, I call Prosper and Prosper will reflect to me what's going on in my business. So I'm so grateful to have you here, Prosper, um, sharing with us. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. Fantastic. I mean, what, what else is there to tell after Josie has just put it all out in the open? So <laughs> it's so, so exciting to be on this platform today. And I really appreciate blessing what you have done, who you have become and who you are becoming. All right. It's not easy in this world, especially, first of all, being female and second of all, being of our color to actually penetrate into this marketing space. And you seem to be doing it heads and, uh, you know, head, head over heels, so to speak, all right? So kudos to you, all right? So naturally, I'm from Zimbabwe, born and bred, and I've been in Australia for about 10 years now. And um, I went to school with Josie. Josie was actually my prefect, and I think I was one of the naughtiest students. So let me tell you something. The things that I'm actually getting paid for are the things that Josie would write me up for in school. First of all, talking to girls. Look at women right now in this whole <laughs> chat right now. And then second of all, um, you know, talking in and of itself. And then third, I used to uh, be part of a drama group, which basically helped me with my confidence, which basically helped me to actually go out and meet a lot of people. We did a lot of public speaking um, and things of that nature. So fast forward, um, maybe five, no, seven years ago, when I came to Australia, I couldn't fit into the system. Like I couldn't fit in at school. So I decided what is the best way for me to actually stand out and look after my family. The first thing that I did was I jumped onto the modeling scene, which obviously didn't take me that far. You know why? I'm not tall and I'm not looking like Brad Pitt <laughs> or maybe I don't have, I don't have the looks that maybe Will Smith or anybody else has. Okay. Even though I might be a, um, you know, a good speaker, but if you're in the modeling industry, you just really need to have that reach that people are looking for. So I started using my expertise for connecting people to actually start building businesses behind the scenes. And all I've just done, if you look behind me, is read everything that's out there, learn as much as I could. And I'm hoping that today I can share the little that I have. And Dina, oh, I was about to say this in Shona or anything else. I don't have any degrees or I don't have any other post high school qualifications. All I've done is just really studied everything that's out there. And that in and of itself has put me in a position that I am. So please don't come claiming that uh, let's see your qualifications or anything else. The one thing that you also need to know about all of this is you don't need none of that. All you need is what's here. All right. And I'm, I know I'm speaking to women here. I'm not touching your breast. I'm saying you need what's, what's in your heart. Once you have a heart, you'll have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I think this is such an important point, Prosper, because this is exactly what you taught me. Uh, the moment I, I, we, we met about uh, four years ago, you taught me the importance of reading. And my library is not as big as yours, but um, I think half of my books I've bought from you, but I've always now made sure that at the beginning of the year, I sort of reach out to you and say, what are we reading? What have you read? What do you recommend? 
So if you're out there and you're running a business and you still do not think reading is important, it is. Um, I have also managed to accelerate very quickly. It's because one, I've invested in mentors, um, people like Prosper um, and other people that I've paid a lot of money for and I've invested in reading. Prosper, tell us why marketing. Well, why not? You see, the thing about marketing is everything that we're doing is marketing. What we're doing right now is marketing. All right. We're always trying to sell something, sell ourselves to our husbands, sell ourselves to our wives, sell ourselves to our kids, sell ourselves to the church. So each and every one of those things has an aspect of you trying to gain somebody else's approval. OK, so I actually had to sell myself to you yet again now because Josie came in and, and put in a doozy and said, this guy, I have a name scans, you know what I mean? So now I have to prove myself yet again. So that's why each and every time you're always out there, people have to know you, they have to like you and they have to trust you. Because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. If, if, if you did not trust Diana at all right now, or Blessing right now, you wouldn't even be on this call, okay? Because look at this. You're supposed to be maybe at some sort of work right now, or you're supposed to be looking after your house, or you're supposed to be looking after your family, but you decided to take this time out of your day just because Blessing showed you something that you aspire for. OK, and that's the reason why you maybe are here today. And I want to also acknowledge that this is also for your own personal reasons so that you'll be able to create for and relate to your own audiences, just so that you can actually maybe host events like this or actually demand money from people so that they can pay you. And I'll be telling you exactly how all of that works out. Thank you so much, um, Prosper. Now, guys, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat and then we'll sort of go through them. The virtual assistant sort of go through them and, and sort of uh, highlight them to us. Prosper, tell us what is organic marketing? This, you know, I think when, when, I, when you say organic, <laughs> people get a little bit confused. What is organic marketing? Can you explain to us in very lame terms what it is? Absolutely. So. Let's, let's really, really dress it down a little bit. So every time you are trying to connect with people online, all right, that's you, yourself, bringing in your raw expertise, your raw product, okay? And the first time people get to engage with your product or your service, they are wondering, is this good for me? Will it work? Or am I not making a mistake? Right. So we've got people. Um, I think there's Lorraine here. Lorraine, are you still on the call? Lorraine you, um, told me that her business is basically promoting bilingual uh, products to to to, you know, for uh, for people. So I'm understanding a lot of people that are on this call here are probably from Zimbabwe and she is trying to help people teach their kids, maybe Shona and Debele. All right. So that being the case. Our kids are our most valuable result, I mean, uh, products, no matter what it is, right? No matter where you are, no matter what you do, your kids always come front and center. So you want to make sure that they're getting the best value. Now, for somebody to organically engage with me in order for me to start looking at a work, especially with the bilingual stuff, what they have to do is make me trust them first. Who are you and why should I care? All right. All of that takes time. All of that takes a lot of effort and people need to really understand what you stand for and what it is that you're going to help them with. So organic marketing is reaching out to people, showing them that you can help them. You have the solutions and you're not paying either Facebook, Instagram or LinkedIn in order to do that. You are doing that in a way that makes you show up to your people, at, you know, without having paid for it. Now, the paid side is where you boost your post so that you reach as many people as possible, where you pay and actually create an ad, all right? That in and of itself is A, okay, but you can't expand on things that haven't been proven. So that's why you really need to have worked on an organic level first before you have actually gone in and started paying ads, 
All right. So like I said to blessing yesterday, yeah. you can't put lipstick yeah. on a pig. All right. A pig will always be a pig. So if you pay marketing, if you do paid ads before you've proven your systems, before you've clarified your message, before you've even let people understand who you are and how you can help them, all of that will be wasted money. So in, in a nutshell, all right. So if you're really looking at um, the difference between organic and paid advertising, this is usually within social media, all right? Organic is any social activity that you do without a paid promotion. You're using these free media tools in order for you to build and engage with an audience so that it gets to know you, gets to like you, and gets to trust you, all right? And paid advertising is basically amplifying an already established and already um, unified message so that you can reach as many people as possible. So in my advice, I really like people to start creating um, content organically so that people get to know, like, and trust you. That is the operative word, especially when it comes to marketing. Like what Deanna is, uh, what, what Blessing is saying, she keeps repeating, I know Prosper for five years. I know Prosper for so many years. How many people do you know from back in your time that you really know, that you really like, that you really trust, okay? What Blessing has done right now is exposed me to you guys who she has worked so hard to bring together. There has to be a level of trust so much that I'm not gonna just come in here and mess it up for her. So things like that take time. We're marketing right now. This is, this is, this is not anything to do with uh, you know, paying somebody to, to, to show up or anything okay. else, all right? There is marketing happening right now. Are you getting to know me a little bit? Are you getting to like me a little bit? Not exactly in those words, but like me in the sense that would you um, listen further to what I'm saying or would you walk away? And then do you trust that what I'm going to say is going to help you be doing, have a happier uh, existence or a business that's profitable and enjoyable? So it's easier and cheaper to do organic marketing than try and pay for something that when you stop paying, Facebook, Google, or Instagram will just take off your advertisement, all right? One other thing, we're all maybe coming from Africa here, all right? The one thing that happens is people always throw money at problems. Have you ever noticed if something is wrong within the family, uh, they just say, or how much does it cost, all right? So that you just get rid of that problem. There's poverty in Africa. There's hunger. There's all of those problems. But guess how people think they can eradicate any of those things by paying money, charity. So that's exactly what's happening within, um, you know, uh, Facebook and the social media front. We are trying to just put money towards something that hasn't been proven, something that hasn't uh, actually started emanating some sort of really good result. And something that we actually don't stand behind. Because if you're not showing up for your business, if you're not creating for and relating to the audience that you're going to be demanding money from, then how do you expect them to continuously support you? Right? Because yes, you can show up today as an ad. Right now, look at this very moment. Unless maybe somebody's scrolling through their Facebook. The ones that are listening to me right now, are you not looking at me on this computer right now or on your phone or whatever device? What that means is whatever ad is in your newsfeed, you are completely ignoring it. And that person paid to show up in your, ad, in your ad. And that's the one thing that we assume that people are seeing our stuff. People are busy. People are busy creating their lives. People are busy showing up on internet videos like this and being shouted at by ex-classmates. No one is watching your ads. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah. And this, I think the concept of um, people buy from people they know, like, and trust is a concept you really taught me very early on. And it's one that I've continued. I think even just this weekend, I did a video and I was, I was hammering about people buy from people they know, like, and trust. So how, 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 um, what are some of the organic marketing strategies? Because when you're now online on Facebook, 
you are on Instagram. Um, it, it's, it's a little bit different the way you build trust than on that one-on-one -on -one level, or, you know, we have it met. So how do we do it on social media? How do we do it even on the website? How do I build trust so that they can know, like, and trust me? Fantastic. All right. So the one thing that normally happens is we all have this device here. All right. Some people have better ones than other ones, but I think since the last five years, nobody cares anymore. We all have something that has a screen. All right. Something that you can connect with people, but behind every screen, there's a person. Each and every one of those people has a family. They have their hopes. They have their dreams. And if they, and if you're lucky, they have a credit card to pay you. All right. So if you really want to engage with people, if you really want to connect at a level of people getting to work with you as much as paying you money, you have to appeal to those people. You have to make sure that they pay attention to you. And how do you do that? You have to understand that not everyone is your customer. All right. Yes, we are all running businesses here and we might think that everyone can buy from us or everyone wants to teach their kids the whole bilingual uh, aspect. I'll tell you what my household looks like. My wife is Italian. All right. So the fact that we've got four different languages before I've even gotten to my wife's other language, Lorraine has to actually come to me with a very comprehensive offer for me to choose between teaching my kids Italian or teaching my kids Shona. Does that make sense? So it takes a while for that, that decision to actually come through. So if you're going to go organic, make sure you have identified who is the best person to buy from you. One thing that I always joke around with uh, Blessing is, Blessing, you've got a really good shop. You've got a really nice Diana's closet, all right? But I would never in my entire life, even if I've got three women that live in my household, buy a dress. So I'm not going to be her customer, no matter what, unless I might want to buy maybe my daughter on their graduation or maybe my wife when, you know, she's taking me out for dinner and, when, and if she's paying. You know, things of that nature. So not everyone is going to be your customer. So if you figure out who your customer is, what are they doing right now? And where could they be? Then it's easy for you to start creating content that resonates with who they are. Let's take an example. Some people tell you, Kuti, your ideal audience is 34 to 65. They are you know, maybe going to work or they are, they look like this, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine. That's demography. All right. But these days we've got 34 to 65 people that are either working from home or they're commuting to go to work. How they consume their, your content is so different because sometimes I don't have time throughout the day to watch videos. So maybe I can read something and pretend to be working. So are you connecting with that person at that level just simply because of how they consume content? So we need to understand who our customer is. And once we know who our customer is, we now have an idea of how to reach out to them. Mm. Would it be through video? Would it be through a podcast? Would it be through social media? Some people are not even on social media. Case in point, I was banned from social media. All right. But I actually run a very profitable business and I help my clients to be on social media. So personally, I'm not on social media, but my team is on social media. If you look out for me on Facebook right now, you will find a picture that was done by me two hours ago. But where was I two hours ago? I was here with you guys. You know why? Because I understand and I know how to create for and relate to my audience. I don't necessarily have to be there. So if you know who, the how will come, but you got to know who, right? So just so that we have an understanding of this, if you have the right kind of person with the right kind of pain, 
that your product or service can provide, then it's easy for you to connect with that person and create content for them. All right. So case in point, we've got Lorraine and I think Miss Marie is on the call again today. Um, um, I might just maybe talk about maybe stuff that you're doing. I, I don't quite know what everybody else does. If you can just put it in the chat there so that I can really um, maybe put an example that will make sense so that you understand that maybe what you're doing, you just probably need to step back a little bit. Who is the person who is going to buy from me at the end? Or maybe if you already have customers, who are the last 10 people who have bought from me? Then you just go out and look for just exactly those 10 people, all right? Not trying to spray and pray with your marketing. Because if you spray and, and start praying, maybe <laughs> people are busy. And if your stuff is not connected to the right kind of person with the right kind of pain, then your marketing falls on deaf ears. And also, if people don't understand the language you're using, all right, I usually say something in Shona at this point, you know, but then everybody else is going to understand me right now. But no, go usually, ahead, and then we'll translate it if we can. <laughs> I did it. See, let's say right now I've been speaking to you guys in English, right? I didn't understand. What language are you talking? <laughs> Absolutely. See, that's how a lot of people are approaching on social media. They are speaking in their own language and assuming that their customers are understanding them. Is there somebody who's in Debele right now there who heard what I said? Who's willing to know Tula? What did I say? Can you just unmute yourself and let me know what you understood? Please. It's okay. Treasure, remember? You got it in the logbook. I'll write our names in. Uh, so, yeah. You know, in the, uh, how we cover the treasure. <laughs> uh, okay, somebody needs to meet themselves. I think it's uh, Priscilla. Noctula, yes, can you just explain to, to everyone what I just said? Exactly. So when unzwile and I'm starting to feel out of place. What are you guys talking about? Exactly. This is exactly how people are showing up on social media. They are showing up speaking in their own language. They're talking about their own product. They're talking about how they deliver a service without taking into consideration, does the audience actually understand me? Does the audience actually want what I'm selling? Does that make sense? So there are aspects in life that we are all um, trying to maybe protect or that we are all trying to um, experience as human beings. We all want to be healthy. We all want to have good relationships. We all want to be wealthy. So if your business is touching upon all of these subjects, first of all, you're already winning, all right? And then second of all, make sure that you are taking these people along with you on the journey. As you learn, that's how you connect. So all you just have to do is know 10 steps ahead of the people that you want to connect with. And make sure whatever you have learned, you just pass it back on to them. All right. So there's people that are in um, African grocery shop. There's people that are disability service provider. Let's start with Bimbai. Bimbai Nyoni, you are doing an African grocery shop. So can I assume you're selling maize meal, uh, beans, tanganda, all of that stuff? Yes, I am. Those are the okay. products. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So basically what you need as, 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 as a business person is not to lead with product. I already know where to get my mazoi. All right. I already, if, if I've been around here, I already know where to get my tangan. I already know where to get my crystal sweets. I already know where to get my chahon biscuits. Mm. What you need to do is create customers. Yeah. And once you've created customers, 
So this is a bunch of people that you that get to know, like, and trust you. All you have to do once in a while is present products to them. So these yeah. people have to trust them by and know you as a brand that provides good quality African products mm -hmm. without you leading with saying, I, I can sell Mazoe. Because if you say that, I'll look for somebody who can do it cheaper, better, faster. And sometimes it might not be you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, does that compute? Does that, does. does that make you see how you can now become organic? Yeah. All right. So one other way of becoming organic is one of my customers is now become my favorite, 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 favorite example. Okay. She, you guys can relate to her. So I don't know, for, for you guys, I know, Josie, you would understand. Have you ever heard of couple tunnel syndrome? Mm -hmm. Does anyone know what that yes. is? Josie? Yes. Yeah. What, can you just give us a brief of what couple tunnel syndrome is? <laughs> well um uh, well in short carpal tunnel syndrome is when um like the nerves in your hands are like blocked and they need to be fixed absolutely Just, like, right. so can you imagine you have carpal tunnel and you're a chef doesn't that take away your ability to actually perform your duty all right so this chef came to me and then they're like i can't i can't do what you do. I can't speak to people. I can't connect with other people. And I was like, you're a chef. Tell me, do you have a recipe that no one knows or something that is traditional to you or unique to you that you can present to the market? And then she went and she thought, and then she came back to me and then she says, I now, I, I know how to create chutneys. All right, so ch chutney, obviously, is like butter. I don't know. I'm not that westernized to actually understand what that is, but anything that you put in on your meat sauce or barbecue or whatever it is, all of those things, she can make very good and nice recipes around that. All right, and I was like, okay, so why can you not put them in a jar and figure out if it's something that you can actually start selling? All right, so we went in with the no luck and trust. We started telling a story about how, you know, she was a really good chef, you know, um, and then this happened. Now she's using her time to create something unique. So she went on and started creating these different flavor chutneys and she started selling them at the marketplace and she was really doing well. And then she started saying, but people are not buying for the second time. And I was like, you know why? Because you're not engaging them enough or exp explaining to them how to use your product so much that you don't have to, I mean, they have to come back for more. And then I was like, can you not put together recipes where your chutneys can be used? So now we're creating more content in order for people to use our services. And then she went and created all those recipes and at the market, she would sell those chutneys and then give somebody a recipe so that they'll use it faster. And then after about 75 recipes, this is what happened. We put them all together into a book. All right. So these are the recipe, the foods that she can create. This is, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know food. I'm, I'm African, we were born hungry. But anyway, I'll show you. So she's created all these different flavors, all right? She's created all these different flavors and that's her there, Megan, all right? And the best part about it all is all of this was just to connect with her audience. She, she makes the food and then writes how to use it. Now we're giving people away this book. Can you imagine if you've got a book like this, in your home that you've been given or you've bought off of somebody who has created a product, would you not maybe open it up or showcase it or use it up until you go and, and use more? So now people know and understand how to use this product and they're buying more of it. All right. So it's, it's not necessarily about you going out to just show social media or whatever it is. You can create instances where people can come to you and you become an organic person that people get to know, like, and trust. All right. So at the end of the day, I mean, the best part about this though, is something that I really am proud of. All right. Something like that. You don't get this. Okay. You don't get this by, by, by placing ads online. You don't get creating or changing people's lives by paying to stay afloat. We, 
are in this to get money and did it. But if you're going to pay to stay, then I don't know how much money you're going to have to spend before you actually start enjoying the actual profits. So if you really look at your business, create something that people really want, create it for somebody to actually use. And once they have used it, they want to use it again and again and again. When you repeat everything, repeat payments, repeat um, connection, repeat referrals. That's what organic stuff is. I want to bring you back to something that you're very familiar with. Have you ever noticed when you go to Mbaremsi, sometimes people don't buy nuts or majanje before they've actually tasted them. Mm. All right. And, 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 and the ladies already leave a little bit for people to try out. And usually they're getting smarter these days. I mean, the last time I checked, they give you the best ones to try, but the ones that are in the <laughs> basket, they're a little bit suspect. But you know what? You, they, they, they have engaged with you. It's called reciprocity. You give me something, I give you something back. They've given value. Mm. So just putting it all in a nutshell, organic means giving first so that you open up space for people to reciprocate. And usually these days, people can only reciprocate with money or with sharing your stuff. That's really where we need to start off from. And Starting off from the top, from paying ads and everything else, that's why a lot of people don't make it in business. You know why? Because they are just paying, 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 and hoping that somebody would like their business, but they haven't really started from the grassroots level. Who are you and who are you doing this for? And you should answer the question in somebody's head right now. Why should I care? Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I, I couldn't stop nodding and, and sort of coming in because actually, if you look at it, guys, the reason why 18 of you have turned up today for this meeting is because I gave you something. So I need you to learn, learn, you need to learn something. I gave you, and some of you, I keep giving and giving and giving. And you know what happens? The trick is, and I think this is a, a, another lesson that Prosper taught me when I was starting business. So I'm going to teach you just now. If you keep giving someone something, it makes you feel like you owe them. And what's the next thing? The next thing they do, they'll say, can you come and join this? And then what do you do? You take out your money and you give them. So <laughs> it's a trick I want you to learn even now that you, when it comes to organic marketing, one of the tricks is you need to give value. And that's how some of you have come for this meeting. So Prosper, we have, um, we, we have identified who our customer is. What are some of the tricks of finding them online, like on, on, on Facebook, on Instagram? What are some of the tricks of getting people, do you know how hard, especially on, on Instagram, to get that follow? Oh, Instagram is the hardest. <laughs> Just to get that follow. So what are some of those tricks? I think we probably have already talked about it, but I'd like you to sort of elaborate on that. What are some of the tricks to getting people to follow you, to buy from you, to where can we find them? Absolutely. You see, <clears throat> people are always buying stuff, but they don't like to be sold to. All right. Right now, you, you could go into a shop and somebody says, ah, can I help you? you automatically, you've got your gut down. You already think somebody wants to sell me something. All right. So if you've got a product, so I've just looked at Tembelani Buche Mbina. Tembelani, Ungapi. Is she there? Oh, sorry. Is he there? Yes, Timberland. Hey, you, can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Mr. Timberland. Sorry. Oh, Timberland. Right. That, that's my wife's name, actually. So she sort of linked me. That's all right. My name is Butler. Butler, great stuff. Mr. Mr. Butler, how are you? Konuda. Kuluma kumbe weateta kumbe monotawa. Kosa, Cape Town. Ah, fantastic. Oh, this is like the world. You know, the world has come to party here. Good work. Blessing. This is remarkable. So basically, you're a pharmacist and you make creams and serums, which basically 
um, help people to treat razor bumps, inflammation, and things like that. That's so right. I'm your customer. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. right. So have you noticed it's it's nice there, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't say. I can't say really. You can't, yeah. Unless you the can't. ticket goes up, yeah. Yeah, but the thing that you treat is is this. I'm I'm definitely your customer. And it's a big, big problem with, with men, especially, especially, especially I'm, African men. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. So so naturally, where do you find people like this? Look, that's my problem, really, Prosper. I, I'm I'm good at making stuff. Yeah. Where I lack is to sell the gold that I've dug. Fantastic. Let, let me let me tell you exactly, especially with your um with your case now if somebody is going to end up buying your product what's mm-hmm. the first thing that happens to them or what are they feeling or where are they oh you mean what do you mean in terms of uh, me having a website or no 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 all right let's look at an example of a, of a potential customer what right. are they going through in their life that would then warrant them to say nah I've had it. I want to go and buy bullshit stuff. What is happening uh, to their face? Uh, it's, it's mainly really people who have this inherent problem that you just described. I mean, especially men who ra- raise a shake, including yeah. ladies, actually, irrespective. Okay. I mean, pubic, armpits, and stuff like that. They do have that uh, folliculitis, papa is called, and reservoir, which is very, very common in us. Okay. Uh, uh, they absolutely. would come, come with that. Uh, the products which are there are chemically based, antibiotics, steroids, and stuff like that. They do treat it, but they've got terrible side right, effects. Right, right. I'm not a doctor. I don't know what chemically based is, antibiotics is, or anything else. <clears throat> what I'm trying to get you to tell me is this person is embarrassed, yeah. show up in, in public. This person can't maybe be on a Zoom like this because, you know, they just think Covering. everybody's yeah. looking at them. Yeah. This yeah. person can't experience life in their fullest. So what are they looking for? They're looking for a solution to I'll take away yeah, and yeah. bring back their exactly. self-esteem or their confidence. Mm-hmm. So you as Mr. Buche, what you want to now start doing is start creating content that resonates with where they are. Mm-hmm. So basically where they are is we can understand you can't go out right now. These are maybe the first few things that you can do before you engage with what we have to sell. Right. Maybe try and, and moisturize a little bit. Maybe try to shave at 7 a.m. in the morning. All of those tricks that other people have that they might not have. Mm. So you're giving them value up front. All right. And then yep. you just so happen to sell yeah, all of these products. Right. When people don't understand or know what you're selling, you need to speak in terms of where they are currently. The pain. Where their pain is. Yeah. So we've got, um, is that that, uh, Lorraine? Lorraine, you are the bilingual person. The biggest biggest issue that I have is I can't connect with my girls. All right? That's a big pain. I mean, obviously I can, but I want want you to understand that as it goes further, there's probably not going to be those little nuances or things that a, a dad or a, a father can can have with their daughter. But I could get that by teaching them a second language. All right. So this is what I'm doing with my kids. I'm teaching them Holy Ten and Vaults, even though Enzo Aisha is a little bit funny with his lyrics they don't understand it yet but they want me to play that music with them when we're when we're traveling around that's my little daddy girl connection time so where am i in the grand scheme of things before i actually buy from you what signs are around me that you can actually um you know make me realize that okay now i need to go and um you know um in, in, engage with your stuff let me talk about something and, and explain to you the marketing that happened during COVID. If people were just told you're going to sneeze or cough or uh, stay in bed for seven days, they wouldn't have understood it. But they're being told, if you feel nausea, if you feel a light headache, if you feel like you can't taste anything, self-diagnosis, 
Those are the things that we want to give to people because we already understand the solution that we want to give them. They don't, but they understand where they are. So for you to find people, you need to go back to where they are, which is point A, and use content organically to bring them to point B, which is where your product I'm talking to women here and maybe Tembelani is, is the, um, um, oh, sorry. Did you lose me for a bit then? Yeah, yeah we did. did. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. You think, ah. Uh... No, that's okay. It was only two, five seconds or 10 seconds. Yeah. All right. So, yes. so where, where they are right now needs to be bridged with content, um, examples, advice, value up until they buy from you. So there's a scientific thing around the buying uh, process. It's called a buyer's journey, all right? It starts off with awareness, where they are aware of the problem that they have. Some people don't quite know it. So it is, the onus is on us to make them realize that they have a problem. Mm. Because if we were not told that you, if you sneeze or if you lose appetite or if you uh, don't, just don't want to be around people. You've got COVID, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's something that we wouldn't have taken into account. So if you really bring it back, where are the people at before they start the journey with you? And then you start from there. What do they need to know? Who do they need to become? in the process to now buy from you. If we're looking at Diana's closet, if somebody has an event that is coming up in six months or seven months, all right? They need to start thinking, oh, is it a black, black tie event? Or is it a, a cocktail dress event? All of that stuff. So if Diana already has content that explains to people when to wear gold, cufflinks with a black shirt so that it matches where to wear gray hair with a black dress all of those things so that people start their journey with just consuming enough information because whenever anyone has a problem they usually ask their friends or take it to google to ask questions so that's where the organic meta starts by the time they then get to ads, they already know who they want to buy from. They already know what their problem is. They already know who is trustworthy enough for them to give money to. So nobody just automatically has a problem today and, and already are looking for a solution unless you're selling maybe even food with Mumbai. It, you know, the kind of food that you sell is something that is a luxury. So I have to make time within my day and figure out what do I actually want that I don't have, which I can't maybe have. So you're, you're attacking nostalgia. The best way for you to start connecting with people is if you have access to butter or, I mean, all those ads that we, we used to watch when we were kids. We want buttercup on our sandwiches, in our cakes and on our bread. We want buttercup on our vegetables. We want buttercup. You see, you, you bring me back already to where I was. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, yeah, there's that Mumbai girl who can bring. That's how you organically connect with people. Yeah. What are you doing when you're not selling your products? Your customers are also thinking they want to fill voids in their lives. So if you're not being the person who's got a YouTube channel that is filled up with all those old ads, you know, or that Olive in, you know, with uh, Olive in Olive um, Tukudzi and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And no one is doing that in this space. Mm -hmm. Can you see what I'm talking about? You see, you need to constantly be reminding people, um, you know, what to want. Now, let's look at McDonald's. McDonald's is at every corner in Australia. And they're on every advert, every five minutes. Mm -hmm. Do we not know what McDonald's is? 
Do we not know what a burger is? Do we not know what Coca-Cola is? But what they're doing is consistently being present. So they're paying for that because they've got the money. But you can also show up in spaces where I would want to maybe connect with my kids and then say, hey, let me show you what we used to watch. Um, and then automatically I come across your, your channel and I'm engaged. And then I'm like, wait, let me find out who is this person who's collaborated graded all of this information. And you just so happen to sell Mazo. Mm -hmm. So for me to say thank you to you, what do I do? Credit card, buy your stuff. Because you know what? You, you filled a void in my life without you even knowing it. So this is why we really need to be sort of married to our business. We need to really be constantly be creating for and understanding where are our customers. So it's not a matter of you going out to find them. Create mm. enough stuff for them to look, seek you out. Because let me tell you something, people are always finding things that are meaningful to them. If you just so happen to have the right kind of product with the right kind of solution, guess what? Eventually, you too will have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Ask me a amazing. question. Amazing. That was so amazing. Mimbai, I think you got something there. I did it. I did it. <laughs> so, so that is amazing. And I think we might just be taking that one on board. Okay, so now we've gone through all this how do we build trust on our website? And I think now is where if you uh, maybe pop your website in the chat, Prosper is going to look at a website or two and tell us how we can get people to know, like, and trust us on our website. Because some people might not be able to meet us one-on-one. -on -one. We need to build our website in such a way that we can quickly, they quickly know us, they quickly trust us, they can quickly, you know, uh, like us. So um prosper how do we build trust on our website so people can buy from us fantastic obviously if you would understand in the last two years people did a lot of transactions using their mobile phone all right so naturally it now means you know people some people took their super out, which is the biggest financial transaction anyone could ever do, especially those that are in Australia, you would understand some people withdrew their super. So what that means is people can now engage with anything using their phones, using their credit card. They no longer have that fear that used to happen. Ah, I can't trust these people. Let me call them first to, 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 to make a purchase. Okay. In the last maybe three or four days, you have maybe purchased something online. Um, using somebody's website and you have maybe uh, done a transaction which involved you actually giving your money or giving people access to your credit card and your passwords and everything else. So people are no longer afraid to buy online, but they need to be made uh, to feel safe, to be confident that this purchase is going to um, you know, they're not going to have their money stolen. All right. So if you would allow me to maybe share my screen. Ah, that's good. I can oh, do okay. that. I think you can. All right. And, and Lorraine, I'm going to do this with utmost love and respect. If you don't mind, I'm just going to um, use uh, your website just so that we can um, uh, create value for other people. Would, would, do I have your permission? Yes, you do. Okay, I haven't made that much money to be sued, but I have enough to look after my family, all right? So, so naturally, I just want to make sure we have done that. This is your website, I did it. Okay, great stuff. All right, so, so basically, when somebody comes to this website, all right, you need to instantly grab my attention, all right? You need to instantly tell me I'm in the right place. I haven't, uh, I have not become lost. So there's so many ways that people are coming to your website. Maybe they're coming through Google itself. Maybe they're coming through social media, or maybe they're coming through maybe a paid ad, right? So let's just assume they're coming through organically and maybe they've been referred to. They want to make sure, right, that they have come to the right place, okay? So you're inspiring young minds to learn, which is okay. It sounds very profound, but what does that mean? Okay. You haven't mentioned learning different languages. You haven't mentioned, um, you know, learning 
more and why 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 does it matter that my kid learns some more things they're already learning a bucket load at school why do i need to add more to them so you need to really um make sure that when somebody steps on your website they are not thinking am i in the right place have i been lost all right so that's one two and then one other thing that you haven't done uh let me just figure out so you created this is this shopify Oh, I didn't realize built with this got an extension. Quid. It's SiteWid, right? For your marketing automation. Is it SiteWid? Equid, E C W I D. Oh, this one here, Equid. Yes. For e commerce. Yeah. Okay. So fantastic. Right. So now that we know how you created your website, we want that at least you show us a little bit about who you are, why, why we should care, because we are giving you our little mind the most prized possession that any parent would ever have. So the least that you could do is show a bit of care. All right. Right now, yes, we understand you've created all these books and stuff like that, and that stuff, right? But sometimes you need to give us more. Why should we buy your stuff and why should we care? All right. This is, this is, this is $30. I mean, it's all good, but this is not enough for me to think there's more because I'm going to think, oh, okay, so, oh, all right, is that it? And then naturally, if I cannot scroll in and find any more information, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to go away and say, let me see if they have something that I really need because you haven't sold this enough. All right. So your role as somebody who is in this space, you should be creating videos. All right. I remember when we were growing up, at 4 p.m., you would go in and listen to her, and then she would talk and have kids, whatnot, whatnot, all of that stuff. If you can bring it back, all right, so that you have either a YouTube channel or a podcast that people can now get to know, like, and trust the reasons why they need to engage with you a little bit more. So that maybe once in a while, if I really want to teach my kids a little bit of Shona, you know, there's a video that says, ah, am I, ba, ba. You know what I mean? All of those just little nuances that will continuously bring people to you. Because right now, I don't know you. I don't trust you. Maybe you're just an opportunist who wants to make money. I can't give you access to my kids. Does that make sense? All right. So if you want me to trust you, give me enough. Okay. Yes, there are testimonials here. But look at this. This is just a happy customer. Thank you very much for great education products. My kids love the book. We try to read it every night. Okay. At least this creates what we call social proof. Some people have bought it and did it. So show us stuff that you're putting on your... Um, uh, on your Facebook, what 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 sort of content are you creating in order to engage these people, <clears throat> educate them on what to want, inspire them to want more? Right now, you're just selling, selling, coloring books. Yeah, let's learn Shona and Debele. You you're just selling to us. You are not, this is your daughter. You, you're on mute. Sorry, a friend's daughter. Okay, fantastic. That's okay. But I don't think, I don't think you're doing enough to really bring people in. All right. Bilingualism is not insignificant. Embrace your mother tongue. Okay. I would, I would advise if you can, and if you could try and show us examples of people that are already out there doing well, who can speak five different languages. Where are they? What has that done to change their lives? All of that information is available. Why should I care that my little girl understands Shona? Because I want to speak to, to Blessing on the phone and, and talk about my wife. And if my little girl can understand, then that means I can't, I can't near them. 
But if you can give me the value in it, okay? And then maybe, um, yeah, show, show us a little bit more about how this is going to help us. So you haven't, I mean, obviously, maybe this is a part-time project, but when you really do venture into this and really want to create something, each book should have its own episodes. Each book should have its own stuff. It doesn't mean you're giving people away stuff for free. No, 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 no. You are literally teaching people what you can provide. And if I can trust you enough, I'll let you look after my kids. There's a lot that you can then create out of this. You can now start creating a course. You can now start creating uh, after school uh, programs, which can be automated. So don't just end at the book. Get a lot of people involved. And the more they get involved, the more they're going to um, really want to know a little bit more about you. You can now start doing it for every level. Imagine how much that would grow you from grade one to form four, form six. All of those are different aspects. You bring in experts. You bring in people that can help you. You own the franchise. Mm -hmm. What color Ferrari are you going to buy after knowing all this information right now? <laughs> A red one. Fantastic. That's usually the only one that's out there anyway. So you already got your eyes on the money. <laughs> all right. So let's look at somebody else. Are you happy with what we just said? The, yes. How organic is totally different from you because you can't pay your way to create authority. Mm. We can't keep throwing money at things. It's like you got a bullet wound and you put a bandaid on there. That's not how you solve it. You go in, take out the ailment, stitch it up, nest, nest the person up until they're ready. The one thing that happens with our businesses is we anticipate a business to actually start producing money just because we created a product. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Sorry about that. I, I went into a, that's how me and Blessing talk. Half yeah, the time. it is. It is very <laughs> blunt. He's always shooting, shooting guns at me. Oh my God. Sometimes you come off the phone and you think, oh my God, that was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm saying this with um, love and respect. Yeah, but no, yeah, I Lorraine, your, your web yeah, your website needs a lot of work. Uh, maybe reach out to Prosper after the call and see if mm. we, we can possibly do something. But it needs a lot of work for me to be able to trust you with my money and with my kids' education. I need to be able to see that straight on. So let's jump onto the next website. Okay, I mean, do, we have, do we have any questions? Sorry, we just yeah, want if, a few if questions. Got any yeah. questions? Anybody got any questions or anything like that? One of the things I saw on Lorraine's website, which I think could be a good idea, is maybe even just um, have more than one pic. You've just got one picture. Maybe some of the, and you've got so much content on your Facebook put those videos and things on your on your thing because people want to see in they want to you know put videos put more instead of just the one picture uh, does anyone have any questions at all another thing is maybe let's know who the author is let's know your story yeah. tell us your hero story yeah exactly let's know why 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 are you documenting why you why now yeah Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, maybe I keep um, freezing. Someone who's got their hand raised. Yes, that's um, Priscilla. Yes. Would you like to uh, hi, guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Priscilla. So I'm, I'm currently in Perth. There's a bit of a time difference. So um, okay. my, kids, my kids are in the background <laughs> shouting. It's okay. Um, we all have kids. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask quickly. Um, I saw, uh, I think it was an advice website. Um, is it beneficial then to um, maybe work with other brands for content creation? Because, for example, with her website, I mean, she's selling books and um, finding other things like other than a picture of a book. What what more could she do to to make it look a bit more, you know, um, uh, enticing? without having her product being lost with whoever she then is working with. Because I, I do notice, um, I spend a lot of time on the internet, you know, looking, I find inspiration, like I, I find someone that I, I want to be at the level at, 
yes. let's say. So for me, I'm, I do kids fashion. So yeah. I will go to Gucci Kids webpage and I will try and gain inspiration from how, how they're doing it. And um, I find sometimes it's very difficult for me to be like, okay, um, I'm going to, I make dresses for kids, African attire. Mm -hmm. I'm, going, I'm going to need to find a business like, let's say Vimbai's business where I can take photos with my kids reading her books. But it's really difficult to sort of gauge, will the customer look at the picture and think, oh, that's a great idea. I'd love my kids to learn, you know, Shona in the diaspora. Let me go without going, oh, that's a nice dress. I wonder where that dress, you know, the kids wearing the dress in the thing and then you get distracted. You might then venture away from her website to okay. go find. So, good There's question. question. <laughs> You're talking about influencer marketing, right? Yeah. Okay, so influencer marketing is something that is a give and take, all right? Some people do it well. Some people are obviously uh, takers within this whole space. So let's start from the, from the start. When you engage in influencer marketing with somebody else, you are agreeing that you are going to also um, advertise that piece of content, same as the other piece is gonna advertise that piece of content. Whenever two brands merge, there's what's called cross-pollination. I mean, for those that went to school, I was always on punishment because of your Steve, so I didn't learn most of these things, but the for those that there's cross-pollination, all right? Your audience gets to see her stuff. Her audience also gets to see your stuff. So the onus is also on you to then say, hey, my watch was featured on Prosper's blog. Go check it out. Do you know what I mean? So don't just leave that to the other brand to bring it out for you. Am I answering your question there? Right? So, so yes, maybe your, your, your product is in, the, is in the background. But you could say, you know what? Prosper is actually on time most of the time. You know why? Because he uses a real phone. He uses an iPhone. And then you can post that instead of you. Oh, have we lost her or? No, no, she's there. Oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, so the onus is also on you to um, reciprocate that. So that's why we, we need to stop being lazy around the promotion of our brands. All right. That's why we need to be doing things that we love so that we're constantly every time out there talking about what we do, who we do it for, and why they should care. Okay. So if you just leave it on to, um, you know, myself or maybe Blessing or Lorraine to expand on your brain, she's only looking after her own interests. All right? So if it's your business, it's your duty to create something that your customers are going to resonate with. All right. Yeah. So I think um, Jude Murray's got a hand raised again. We're running out of time. So we'll hear what Jude, if you've got any questions, maybe just pop them in the chat and we'll sort of have to pick one or two, but we're running out of time. So uh, Jude, if you unmute yourself and um, fire away. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for the, uh, for the for this platform. I think it's it's really important that we come together and kind of share ideas as we are doing. And um, what I just was going to sort of reiterate as well with what Prosper just sort of mentioned and uh, the other lady um, kind of questioned, it's all, it's actually a fun that the cross-pollination is actually a really good idea because it means that you're sharing ideas and it, um, you take less time to actually, you know, produce a content because then you're kind of merging your ideas together. And I've, I've done a few things, you know, collaboration with other people, like when I did the Melbourne Fashion Week. You know, the other lady had the fashion, um, you know, the clothes, I had, you know, the accessories. And so we then, you know, um, we all did one one thing, but then we ended up also, you know, like, like a prosper saying, you have to actually then say, okay, fine, I was featured on, on this thing, and this is what I had, you know, sort of thing. And I think also just with the fact that, you know, um, the book is actually being um, a, a read, and it's about language and stuff it is actually gonna be very appropriate for you to actually have 
um, why would we go in and, and have someone wearing a polo shirt or something from Kmart and yet we can have each other to actually promote those, those products because that African print dress that that kid is gonna wear is gonna resonate differently and, and actually resonate better because then the person who's looking at it, who's gonna be wanting to speak short and whatever relates to African fabric um, and African dress and then they are reading a book. And that to me is actually so much better than just anything that we put out there. Awesome, yes, that's a good point there, Jude. Thank you so much. Um, Prosper, there's a few people that have ch shared their website in the chat. Maybe look at one more before we go. And then after that one more, you can sort of just tell us. It would be such a shame for all those people who've made an effort to type in their websites that you don't look at one more. Please just look at one more, five minutes. And then after that, you can just tell us where you can be found, what you do. And then also share a little bit and then maybe um, leave. Okay. Um... I just found somewhere here, J J Ru Home. Who's who's that from? Oh, it's from uh, Ruth. I mean, from Perth. Ruth Chivinda, how are you? Ruth Chimombe. Oh, it says Chivinda here. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell me, tell us a little bit about um, what you're selling. Um. I design and create custom steel furniture, um, mm -hmm. the artwork, uh, decorative pieces for, for women, uh, particularly women uh, that love um, to beautify their homes with uh, unique pieces uh, and customized to suit their spaces. So I just uh, design from, from scratch and then resize everything and uh, make them. Fantastic. You know, you've got the best business for organic content. For each piece that you're designing, can you tell us the whole story of how you came about that and what you're doing? Just take us behind the scenes because people will actually be much more inclined to then be able to tell a story about how their piece was produced instead of having just bought something. Because what you're creating is art. Mm -hmm. All right. This is not something that somebody can go and pick up and came out or something of that nature. Right. Can you see my screen or am I? Yes. No, no. We can see your screen and we can see you and yeah. Ruth as well. That's good. absolutely. So naturally, if somebody walks into my hallway and there's something like this and they're commenting and say, oh, my God, this is so nice. And I'll be like, let me tell you. All right. About how this was made. You know, there's copper there and even the glass is tempered. You know why? Because I saw the video of how this thing was made. Okay. So that's how you create organic content because you now engage people to be a part of the creation process. And then maybe you want to work with people that are, you know, I don't know if you have that a lot in Perth, but we've got a lot of people that do um, homes, you know, uh, home display homes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So in display homes there, you can actually start connecting with people that um, what are they, what th those people that design or that, that, what do you call it? Uh, stage. 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 That yeah. stage display homes. All right. And usually in some display homes, there's, there's, there's where the thing came from, who created it and the process. And you can actually just put a small QR code that, gets back to your to your videos that you've created. So if you're the one that's creating them, if you're the one that's designing them, all of those processes are content. Yeah. All right? You, it's not like if I see you doing it, I'm going to start going into my garage there and start cutting up metal and, and thinking that I can create that by myself. It's never going to work like that. No. Fantastic. All right. Let me, let me go for one more. Just please, please, if you can allow Thank me. You. Thank, thank you, Prosper. Is it something that you think you can do or is that? Yeah, it's, it's something that I think I, I can do. Um, and yeah, probably just uh, up my game. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, or just pictures. The process of it all. Okay. okay? The yeah. process of it all. Okay, there's another supermarket here. But there's a, there's a, uh, you can buy ones. Maybe let's look at that one before we... Uh, what am I looking at? If you can yes, just a super mat one. Uh, Rome, Rome. Um... Uh, 
Which is and I'm also cool. hoping that everybody is yeah everybody. is happy with with what they're doing in their business because what what would be the point? You know what I mean? What would be the point of sitting around here for an hour and not really being excited about what it is that you do? All right. So here is um, here's a here's a here's a here's one. Bimbai, this is your website. I think it, I hope she's still there. Yeah, but that's Bimbai's website. Yes. I, okay, great. Okay, yeah. so this is powered by Shopify. Um, okay, so there's basically nothing different in what you're offering. All right, but this is where now your your message gets too diluted okay because you're talking asian african middle eastern foods all of that let people decide maybe when they show up all right because if it's going to be too much then i can just go to woolies because now you become a worldwide shop even though you are specifically working with this kind of people i wouldn't think you have any idea what people eat in Bujumbura, yeah. all right? Because somebody will show up and then they'll be like, I don't recognize any of these things. Ah, this is not for me. Vimbai, are you there? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Thank all you. Right. Unless somebody has been physically directed to your website or if they just stumble up, 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 up upon this, it will be very difficult for them to trust that you've got their best interest at heart. So choose your game, but obviously within your work and within your 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 stuff, you can actually start um, because all you're doing is you're you're attracting nostalgia, and nostalgia is something you have to work towards. Mm -hmm. We can do without shopping from Zimbabwean shops. That's one thing for sure because everything that we need we have, but that's now yet another level of of nostalgia. So if you want to appeal to nostalgia, you really need to put in the effort to show me that you understand what my childhood was like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then pretty much from then on, it's easy for me to then connect with you. You can, for some people, it's, it's, you can make three different pages, which represent the one thing, one for African shops, one mm -hmm. for Middle Eastern and one for something else. So if somebody types into Google or is looking for a specific page, you make it look like you've got their best interests at heart. You're not just being spraying and praying. That's one thing that I would do. Two, um, yeah, maybe happy faces of people that have actually bought from you. Yeah. Okay. If that's possible, that would be good. Kids eating Cerevita, all of those things. Just, just bring it home a little bit. Mm -hmm. all right so that it's not more like a tax shop yeah okay if you want to engage online but if you're engaging in person and people already know you you probably have a whatsapp co collection of numbers that you can just send to whenever you have new products do you do you have that already going on uh no not really i do have uh, some frequent uh, customers but i haven't really been sending diane has mentioned it that i need to be sending more information letting know what is happening absolutely so you need to create customers for your products yeah you are not the creator of these products so yeah. you can't vouch for them but you can vouch for your provision of this service mm -hmm. and did it so yeah. that's that's one thing that you can do create customers for your products not try to bring products to customers okay yeah it's it's a hard sort of quest um way of looking at it but once you get around to it you, you now have a bag of customers, maybe 10,000, 20,000. All you're doing is every week you're sending them specials or whatever, um, you know, like this one here that you have here. You can just send this to your people and then they would know what to do with it because they already know, like, and trust who you are. So your role is not to sell products. Your role is to gain trust with people that can then buy from you. Yeah, thank you. All right. right. I think I think it's 20 past. Prosper, where can people find you? Oh, uh, very good question. Uh, I'm no longer on Facebook, so don't try and even look for me on there. But naturally, this is this is how I operate. I work with people that are already at a certain 
income bracket, okay? So the least that maybe I can do for people that are getting started is I've created a body of work. I've got a podcast, I've got videos, I've got books that I've written that would then generally put you in the right direction um, for you to start working with me. So I'm gonna put um, the first point where you can get uh, me from, which is basically an ebook that I wrote, uh, which tells you um, how to create your business in such a way that you escape the humdrum of having to um, look for customers 24 seven. All right. And I've called it the uh, 90 day business blueprint. So I'm just going to put it in the chat there so that you can um, get wind of, oh, here's the chat. Yeah. All right. So, so we've got a podcast. I've got um, even my websites, uh, Live Long Digital is my business. So just remember, Live Long and Prosper. Um, you could always look at, um, we've got enough organic content to last you a whole lifetime, um, even before you've even started talking to me. So I don't mind having people uh, introducing themselves slowly to myself that way. But um, I, I do appreciate if you um, do come across my stuff, maybe share it or uh, recommend somebody who would be able to understand how we can help them. Was that, was that what you asked me or did yes, I just yes. go no, into... Um, maybe pop your number in there as well in case people want to talk to you. <laughs> Or pop your email, or maybe do you want them to just yeah, maybe, maybe your okay, your landing page. <laughs> I already put the landing page and and also maybe my uh website. Your website. Um I usually like it that people schedule a call with me. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? The reason why is because at the end of the day, um, I want to give people value instead of just randomly showing up to, to a call. Uh, when I'm not prepared. So with yeah. all love and respect, that would be the best way to uh, engage. Unless you're, you're Diana, who knows on Saturday, I'll be cutting my grass and then just picks up. Her. <laughs> Randomly calls. I, 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 yeah, no, I, I think I've known you for five years. I think I'm entitled to that one. I can pick up the phone and call you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I really appreciate you. I, I, hope, I hope this worked for you. I, I really appreciate thank you so much i do appreciate you coming and making the time to share with us um yeah thank you so much prosper can i say um, one other thing i yes. really appreciate you 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 showed josie that i'm still i'm not i'm not that that kid that used to uh be a nuisance at school yeah <laughs> I, I think maybe that's what she still thinks am i am i right there josie <laughs> No, you know, guys, to be to tell you the truth, I was just I hammered on Prosper, but he was he was the person that could get anything done. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And he was the um the musaladi. <laughs> <the person. laughs> really, really? Yes. Because he thinks yes. everybody's a salad. Oh. No, 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 no. He, Prosper was the, the musalad. <laughs> the musalad. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. I will be putting Prosper's landing page in our group, e-commerce startups, for those of you who want to uh, download his free um, um, e-book so you can read it. Uh, now, those of there are three ways in which I can uh, help you for those of you who are not in my coaching program or those of you who have not been in contact with me. Number one is to join my free um, uh, group, e-commerce startups, and I'm, I share tools and resources in there to help you grow and or start an online business. Number two is to book a free strategy call. And in that call, I'll take, I'll, I will give you the roadmap which you need to take to get whatever you want to do done, which is maybe start a business or get more sales. And number three is to join my coaching program. And I do, I, it was nice to have, um, I think, uh, some of my uh, clients here on the call today. If you want to join the tribe, please reach out um, and I'll be able to help you. So thank you so much. Um, let's meet online somewhere on the e-commerce group. Thank you guys for attending. <laughs> Hmm.
All right, blessing. Thank you so much for this. I, I really so appreciate much. it. I do appreciate I, I appreciate you coming mm -hmm. close, but thank you so much. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for making time for us. <laughs> There's also uh, sorry, Jen, I have a quick yeah, you've got a quick question. Go ahead. As people are jumping out, you're free to ask questions. Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to find out if if I'm able to get a recording of this. Um, because I've been attending all the